How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Hi, everybody. A lot to talk about today. Things are kind of falling into place here for the summer. Very exciting to see it happen. You got CM Punk officially announced for Collision. It was delayed by a week, but it's here. Let's see what happens. We're going to talk about that today. WWE unveils a new Universal Championship title belt. Mixed reaction. I like it better than the than the blue title. I don't like it better than the black title. Somewhere in the middle, I guess. The latest chapter in the Bloodline also happened on Friday on SmackDown. Man, great story. Great storytelling. This is the beauty about pro wrestling. You can have something like that happen. That's such a captivating story. And then you could have some great wrestling also. Really cool stuff. Also, a dream match and a rematch set up for Forbidden Door. I tease this all week that I don't think people are going to be very disappointed with this card. I think people are going to be blown away on how great this card is going to be this year. Last year was fantastic too, but this year I think is going to be a little bit better. Uh, we saw two matches get announced. Also, G1 announced. The participants. Eddie Kingston. We're going to talk about that also. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happening, guys, here. A ton of stuff. A lot of we don't knows also. What does the summer look like for WWE? I think it's a little bit more organized than the, than the possible surprises in AEW. I think we can kind of anticipate how the summer is going to go for WWE. AEW, on the other hand, there is a lot of pressure to make this work, and I think it's it's falling into place here. When we come back from break, we're going to talk about this and a whole lot more here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live, we'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition back here on Sports Byline. CM Punk officially announced for his debut at Collision June 17th. There was also a story that came out that Ace Steel and CM Punk will have heavy, heavy creative uh, involvement around his programs and people around his programs. I don't know. I haven't really been able to, um, you know, get that in an official manner in any way. But, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I think he was always very hands-on with his creative. And I think this is just going to continue that. Maybe a little bit more with a second brand. But I want to talk about a little bit on the importance of this. And how will this affect viewership and attendance? I think we're going to see an immediate increase in, in viewership. I think we're going to immediately see an increase in attendance. But what does the viewership mean for sat Saturday? You know, the, the, the expectation on a Wednesday is a little bit different on a Saturday. A lot of people aren't home on Saturdays. A lot of people are watching other sporting events. You have a WWE pay-per-view once a month that's going to get in the way. You're going to have a UFC pay-per-view once a month that's going to get in the way. So two out of the four weeks are kind of splitting your audience with a very very similar product how will that impact it i don't know i don't think anybody knows at this moment maybe there's a lot of crossover maybe there's not a lot i, I would expect the wwe shows would hurt it more than the ufc but we'll find out but we saw something very interesting on wednesday and that was the return of a lot of ring of honor talent onto dynamite onto a main aew show and you look at this card, and they were really doing a lot to kind of set up new personalities on their TV for when, you know, you're adding another two hours, you have people here. You know, the show opened up with Moxley, Claudio, and Yuta against the Lucha Brothers. Then you got the announcement. Swerve defeated Big Bill. By the way, Big Bill, I, I would think he's going to get some sort of presence. He looked great in that, in that battle royal. By the way, one of the best battle royals I've seen. I said this on throughout the week. I very much like that battle royal, and I think Big Bill looked really good. Now, is the name good? I don't, I don't think so. I'm not crazy about it. You got Don Callis and Takeshita explaining their actions, which obviously Takeshita is getting a big push here. You know, you, you, you are seeing things happen here. The Gates of Agony were on, and they, they are an impressive group. So I'm I, I think you know splitting this is gonna be a lot better, less mixed tags. I think you're gonna get more singles. Uh this is a positive. Now, 
What does that mean for the future of AEW as far as main events go? I, I think we're going to find out. You know, where do you place Punk? I mean, the rumor is Jam Samoa Joe. I've seen some images that point towards Samoa Joe at some point. We also heard the Chris Jericho story. But, you know, who else is there for him? I think you can create some really cool matches around this, depending on how you do the split. Also, Forbidden Doors coming up after this. And we got a lot of pieces to Forbidden Door. Brian Danielson challenged Okada via a video at Dominion. He said he was in the desert, didn't he, Matt, during that scrum? Uh, yeah, I think what they did is they filmed the Wheeler Yuta stuff for Dynamite, him doing neck bridges, and they did the same shoot um, when they were in Vegas, I'm yeah. guessing. I mean, that's a dream match for sure. Brian Danielson, Kazuchika Okada. Fantastic. I'm into this. We also got Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega that I want to spend some time on here. But, you know, we're, we're seeing these things shape up. And from what I have seen about this Forbidden Door card, from what I've heard, it's going to be really good. And I'm psyched for it. I like these non-canon super matches you could put together that doesn't harm anything. Doesn't get in the way of your storytelling. You could do this one off or you can make it a story. It doesn't matter. It's just a fun show. And I think that's something that that they do really well in. Um, but you know, Punk coming back, where do you put him on that show? Or do you use him? He was supposed to face Tanahashi last time, correct? Yes. And, and we never got it because he broke his foot. So, I mean, you could go back to that. You could do something else. I, I've I've been really wanting to see him in Kenta because that makes so much sense for, you know, just the lineage of, of that move and, and who kind of, uh, you know, punk reinventing it here in the States on a mainstream, pop, you know, audience. Uh, you have that also. So very interesting stuff here. What stood out for you for the punk stuff? Anything? Do you think it's going to, Matt, for, for, in your opinion, you think this is going to be a, a, a needle mover? as far as a hole for AEW, or do you think they'll get an initial pop and then kind of sit back where they were? I'm kind of leaning in that direction, where it's going to be hot at first. It just ma It's a matter of how compelling those first stories are. They gotta, they're they going to have to come out hot. Whatever that first collision show, they're going to have to start creating an angle that makes a lot of sense and gets a lot of attention on it. Because you're right, there's a lot of competition, not only with... Um, the shows they're doing, but the uh, a lot of the um, uh, other stuff that's going to be happening, not so much in the summer, but when they get into the fall and they don't have a hot product, yeah, people are going to be watching football. And I mean, sa Saturday night, uh, college well, also football is think huge. about how much they got going on this summer, right? They have mm -hmm. they have the debut of this new show th that they got to put a lot of effort in with a lot of big matches to get you to commit to a Saturday night of TV. You're going to have Forbidden Door. You're going to have All In. You're going to have All Out. And then you have a little bit of a cool period here. Unless you continue these really crazy, you know, hot angles and, and get ready for a full gear in November. So you're going to have about... Oh, and then you got a Grand Slam. That's another one coming up, right? Right after Forbidden... Uh, right after um, All In. All Out. These names, too close. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff they're going to do. I'm expecting them to kind of space these things out next year a little bit more rather than putting everything together. But, you know, this kind of works. It's the summer. I think people are willing to travel and go to shows, and it, it's getting people talking. But I, I, I'm very curious on what they do. Very, very curious on how they do it and what they do and what happens to Rampage now. I would say move a lot of these Ring of Honor guys and put them on Rampage. Make that, you know, kind of highlight that. Make your main event of Rampage, you know, the Ring of Honor world title or whatever you want to do. I think there's a there's an avenue for that. They did a good job this week. Man, they did a good job this week on Rampage. Holy moly. This card was... <laughs> I don't know how much it's going to mean to viewership. I, I, I'm, I'm curious. I, I don't have the, the overnights. Which I'm sure maybe Matt could pull it up while in the in the next segment. But look at I mean, just look at this, right? You got Vikingo, Commander, and Dar Dar Darlistico to open the show. You continued the Jeff Jarrett, Karen Jarrett, and uh, Mark Briscoe uh, Aubrey stuff. Zack Saber Jr. defeated Action and Dreddy for the New Japan Strong Television title, 
Willow Nightingale defeated Emi Sakura for the Strong Women's Championship. And you got Shibata in the main event against Lee Moriarty in nine minutes to retain the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. I think a lot of people have forgotten that Shibata was pure champion. You know how many messages I got last night? Shibata's a pure champion. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> at the last show. I-, I mean, that looks incredible, doesn't it? On paper, I mean, it's a unique, it's all pro wrestling. It's unique matches. It's people that you don't see regular, regu- regularly on TV. You got Shibata there. You got a lot of New Japan connections. And I think we'll see more of this with the Forbidden Door coming up. But very cool stuff. Like this is this is a this is the stuff I really like about AEW. Unique matches, unique concepts, very different, unpredictable. You know, if they could keep Rampage like this, it it, it it'll probably convince me to watch it at ten o'clock at night. Or maybe not. I don't know. That's my big problem here. It's the time. But regardless, listen, cool stuff coming up. AEW is doing some really good stuff. So I'm looking forward to this uh, summer. The next couple of weeks are going to be very telling. Now, next week, we're going to find out what the main event of that first collision show is. Listen, I don't I don't have any guarantees. I don't know anything uh, specifically today about this match. But, I mean, a lot of people have been saying Joe and Punk. And to me, you want to come off. Start off with a bang. Punk comes out there, says whatever he's saying, and here comes Samoa Joe. And later in the night, you got a match. Don't save it for the following week. You could do something very, very cool to retain your viewership. When we come back, we're going to talk about a whole lot more, including Roman Reigns and his new universal title. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. You have a lot of my scoops on there, as they say. Scoops. I like two scoops. I got ice cream last night. I got two scoops. Nice gelato. Let's talk about this. WWE SmackDown. Looks like they did some good business last night with viewership. The overnights were pretty high. You got the unveiling of the new Universal Championship, which is the same... As the old Universal Championship, just gold. It's golden. I found it interesting. Now, I am I hope he comes out with three belts <laughs> until he loses that title. You know, I think it's a, a, just the visual of Paul Heyman holding two of them because he's never lost them and he's refusing to hand them back. I think that would be a cool little visual. But, man, what a great piece of storytelling they've done with this. And... You know, I know a lot of you guys were so sour on Roman, you know, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, you know, it it was, the story was, man, he's just not doing it for me. It's the John Cena treatment. They're pushing this guy. They're giving him these wacky lines. Suffering succotash. He went away due to his illness. The pandemic happened, obviously. He came back. And it is a different person. This is a... I mean, from the time he came back to now, he has... I mean, the storytelling is almost... What is it? Three years now? Two and a half years? Fantastic storytelling. Yeah, uh, two years. Uh, Just, you've evolved this guy into a legitimate... You know, in the argument of top people, right? He is the top guy for this era. And he is a needle mover. And this is a guy that people were complaining about constantly, about how he was, they didn't want to see him anymore. And it shows you that, you know, sometimes it's a story. It's not the man. And I I think this was the big moment for WWE. They have discovered that storytelling is very important again. Just doing the, the, you know, great matches, which obviously, listen, Roman doesn't really have bad matches. All the matches are fine. They're good. They're four-star and the higher matches. But the storytelling and the emotion has created this great, great piece of television. To kind of backtrack, you know, back to Night of Champions, you know, just great storytelling as a whole here. 
the Usos take out uh, take out uh, uh, Kevin Owens on the floor. Uh, you know, uh, Roman is not you know kind of lost. They go in the ring, super kick to Sammy, a second super kick to Sammy, a third double super kick misses, hits Solo, and that's the only thing Roman sees in the distance peeking as he rises up. And you think, oh, man. Comes in, and they did the piece of business in the ring, and it has led to this moment. Roman has a celebration in the ring, thousand day as world heavyweight champion, world heavyweight champion. Universal, Undisputed, All-Time, Mega Champ, whatever they're going to call it this week. And here come the Usos. And just the, the the emotion of that moment is really what's great about pro wrestling. And that crowd ate it up. Um, you know, it's continuing the story where Solo somewhat sided with his brothers. And then, but because Roman is the tribal chief, he has to bend the knee and do what he wants. And he takes out his brothers. Great. Oh, man. Matt, what did you think of this? I mean, I love all this stuff. I'm a bit... Here's the reality of what I like about wrestling. Okada and, and Danielson, I could watch that match 15 different ways with 15 different people. Give me a level of match like that, and I am, I am happy. But you got you to gotta appreciate good TV, and this is great TV. Do you love it as much as I do, Matt? I do. I, there's parts of this that every week it's like, where are they going to take this next? And we all speculate, oh, this is going to be over. Okay, it's done. Okay, the bloodline's over. They're ending the story. And then all of a sudden, they change another, we go in another direction. I feel like we are going full circle, going back to when this whole thing started. And, and uh, you know, Jey Uso challenged uh, Roman, and then and then Jimmy got involved, and then they sided with him. Now we're going back the other way, and I think at the end of this, and I've said this on here before with you, um, I think the guy is solo. I think they're gonna he's gonna end up being the one that maybe dethrones Roman. I I know I know it's, he still has some a way to go, but man, he looks good. His matches, it's good. He has a certain look about him that reminds you of his uh, yeah. uncle and his dad. And but you know uh, what's amazing? You know, so, you know what's the most amazing part of this? We are not talking about The Rock anymore with Roman, right? No, no. And, and, and they've totally pivoted. A lot of this, a lot of that conversation had to do with the fact that Roman ran through everybody. Roman beat everybody. Roman beat Edge. He beat Danielson. He beat Cody. He beat Brock. Uh, whoever else. Kevin Owens he's beat. Sami Zayn he's beat. They have solidified this guy as unbeatable for two years. And for for... I mean, and th that says a lot, right, to the fans also, that we we have determined that, you know, maybe the only one that could dethrone him is, like, the real tribal chief, and that's The Rock, you know, the most successful one in that family. And right now, and I think this is a positive, I think this is a positive for when that match does happen, uh, that you have created, you know, you cooled off the buzz, and now people come back into it. And it's also done this amazing thing where you have conditioned yourself into thinking Roman is the biggest deal, uh, in this company, they had a moment to beat him, and they still didn't. It still couldn't happen. So whoever does beat him now, this they it's going to be bigger than ever. And I'm all for it. I'm all for this. Whether or not you beat him this year or not. You know, he's coming up against against uh, Pedro Morales' record in like 10 days or so, whatever that number is. I, I think he it's like 10, 1,024 days, and Roman is almost there. He has like another two weeks left. Followed by Bruno's second record of, I think, 1,200 days. Would you know what? That would bring you to when? Another 200 days for him? You could possibly do it. If you're holding up towards Mania, whoever beats him at Mania, you could do something unique here. And people are invested in it. People are liking it. The ratings are saying it. The attendance has been... You know, if you don't follow WrestleTix, you really should. If you're into numbers. This dude puts out, I mean, the work that they do over there is tremendous. Uh, they, they, Their Patreon is great. I, I subscribe to it. I get a lot of my numbers from there. Uh, but you could see it if you're tracking WWE attendance. You could see that they're, they're, they are a hot, hot product, and they have not been this hot in a very, very long time. Last night, White Plains, New York, sold out. Legit. For a house show that was main evented by The Miz... 
And Seth Rollins. Not, not that I'm knocking Seth Rollins. By the way, Seth Rollins has the other title. So it is, you know, it's still the shield effect, right? Three top people in the business were part of that original crew. There's something very special about all three of those guys. And whoever is the one that recognized it in WWE, I, I, I can't remember who it was. I might have been Punk, isn't right? Didn't Punk want the shield to be uh, Chris Hero, Rollins, and uh, Ambrose? That's the rumor going around from that Man, podcast you know, years ago. I, I remember when that came out. And, I mean, years. I, I mean, like another year or two after that. Mid, Mid-Shield peak, right? People are like, you know what? It would have been great with Chris Hero. Chris Hero got the short end of the stick. It would not have worked with him like that. Uh, they would have never invested in Chris. Unfortunately, I freaking love that guy. He's one of the greatest. I've seen Chris Hero wrestle a million times. But it's just Roman was the guy. They knew whoever it was. It, it, fascinating. I mean, I guess you look at him, you're like, how, how, do, how do you not push this guy? <laughs> look at the hair. Look at the body. Really cool stuff. But they're getting ready for this. Uh, SmackDown was a good show also. There, there has been a shift to younger talent also on this show. If you're noticing, there's a lot of, lot of stuff happening. You know, Austin Theory opened the show saying that one day he'll hold the title longer than Roman Reigns. So you're prepping Austin Theory as like that young up-and-coming guy. Pretty Deadly was on the card. Hit Row was on the card. Uh, you know, Grayson Waller was it on the card. You know, they, they, they've shifted this a little bit. They're going younger. They're trying to build new talent. And I think that's the great part here because you have an opportunity because your main event is so hot, you could put in younger talent and, and have people interested in them. It's all psychology. And AEW's doing the same thing. We saw that on Dynamite this week. Younger talent, uh, Ring of Honor names. You know, you th the future is in the youth. It is in constantly evolving. And, and luckily for us as fans, both companies recognize this. I didn't, how did you feel yeah. about Raw? I'm, I'm going to pass. I'm going to skip Raw. It, it's, it's still a chore to me, man, that show. Raw, Raw yeah. is 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 a an acquired taste for me, and it's not and terrible. It's, it's not bad. Yeah, a lot of times it's background noise now, and you know I do other stuff during that time that I would usually set you know take the whole three hours, but I can't do. I, I got to do it in pieces, or I go back and watch clips later. Um, and some of the, I make sure to try to find out what the highlights are going to be. Um, I will say this: one thing I loved this week um, from SmackDown. And it was so bizarre that women's segment where um, EO and Asuka and everybody came out during the Grayson Waller effect. Yeah. Um, that was really, really interesting. I think they're, I think we are going to get that Asuka EO classic match, hopefully. I um, hope so. All this. I, I mean, know, what a, the, what a great match that'll be. Stuff is done. Yeah. yeah fantastic. You know, I would, I would love that. Maybe we, I would love a three way with Bianca, Asuka, and EO at SummerSlam. That would be, money for me it's in your neck of the woods so you maybe maybe you'll want to go to that <laughs> it's right there <laughs> i i just i feel like this was this was really good tv um this week for smackdown uh you know we're, we're seeing this happen but the big question is who's after roman you got to create somebody after roman there has to be someone else or else that momentum is going to fall you know it could be one of the usos that beats them maybe maybe a feud between the usos the usos kind of split up you could do that as well very interesting stuff. When we come back, a whole lot more to break down here on Wrestling Observer Live here on Sunday. Hey, guys, again, follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian, and we'll be right back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. Hey, interesting uh, post from WrestleNomics uh, on Twitter that somebody just sent me. We were talking about, you know, preemptions and competition for AW Collision. There's a lot of preemptions. Uh, if you go based on the schedule they had in 2022 up until, you know, 2022 and, and, and what we have this year, there's 16 possible preemption days. NHL regular season uh, on 1-1-22 uh, they aired. NBA All-Star Saturday night. NHL regular season game. A TNT basketball, uh, NCAA basketball championship. You got that for a couple of weeks. You got the NHL playoffs. One, two, three, four for the playoffs. MLB division series. 
Uh, for baseball, you have one of those. And then you for 2023, you would have had U.S. Men's Soccer, NBA All-Star Saturday Night, TNT NCAA Basketball Championship, NBA Playoffs Round 2, and the NHL Playoffs uh, Semifinals. So, you know, these are... These are going to play a part, so I don't know what they do. Do they move it to another night? Do they move it to an earlier time slot? Do you not air it live? I we're, These are all questions we're going to find out. I don't have the answer to this. And this was the big part of why, you know, going to T, TNT versus TBS, uh, this was the risk with going to TBS. Or TNT, I should say, not TBS. Uh, very good post by Russell Nomics here. Always with the numbers here. Also, the video game is coming out. Now, uh, a lot of buzz over this. A lot of people were able to put out their previews and their initial thoughts of the game, but there, you know, there's a lot of embargoes out where you can't see certain things. There's certain uh, downloadable uh, characters that they, they're not ready to unveil yet. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about this game. From everything I have heard, the gameplay is super fun, and it's easy to pick up. If you're a casual gamer, you'll get it. You'll pick it up. It's it's a very quick uh, learning curve here. Unlike, you know, WWE 2K23 or that, you know, has evolved over the last X amount of years. And, you know, it, it's difficult. Like, listen, man, I'm 39. Uh, I was a gamer and then I wasn't. And it gets very hard to pick it up once you stop playing. And that has always been my challenge with, you know, playing 2K23 because I'm so behind. It's not fun for me getting my butt kicked over and over again. I think this game kind of alleviates that. Now, the graphics is a whole separate discussion. I don't know if they're going to patch this. I don't know if what we're seeing is a pre-beta uh, or a beta, a pre-release. I, I don't know because some of these shots look miserable and others look really good. WWE 2K23 graphics? No, but I don't think it was ever intended to be that. It was supposed to be more like an arcade pickup. You know, in the in the in the lineage of the No Mercy WrestleMania uh, 2000 game. So, we're going to find out, but there's a lot of videos out there if you're interested in the game. I I ordered a PS5. I haven't told my kids yet. I'm picking it up. Uh actually actually I bought it from a pro wrestler. <laughs> uh Joey Image, retired pro wrestler here in the uh, Northeast. I'm picking it up from him on Tuesday. But, you know, I I, I got to do it. I want to check it out. I want to play the game. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Matt, where am I going? You're my producer. Where should I go? New uh, Japan. Well, let's, yeah, let's do some New Japan. Uh, as, as he wrote, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, MG, our producer, he's fantastic. But writing these notes, New Japan domino results. <laughs> now, who won? Who won that game of dominoes? Uh, very cool card. I have not seen all of this. I saw some of it. I and mean, everything I saw, I absolutely liked. New Japan, uh, arguably right now, the hottest promotion with wrestling. They're getting it back for sure. They're right? getting it back for sure. You know, it was from 2019 on, even prior to the pandemic, I, I would say that I, I cooled off on New Japan. They lost a lot of top talent. Uh, there was a lot of wrestling with AEW on TV. A lot of the attention went there because obviously they got the Bucks, they got Kenny. You know, that was a big story here. And the pandemic really put New Japan into a grinding halt. Also, management changes that was happening in that company with Bushi Road was not helping them. Uh, to be honest, that that's kind of the, the biggest... reason why we didn't see the Bucks and Kenny there. Originally, the concept was that they would be welcomed. Uh, and people thought that there would be the synergy between the two companies because of how close everybody is. But it was management and disputes, and it really, uh, the pandemic kind of stopped everything here. This was one of the I first think, shows yeah. I have seen, including Wrestle Kingdom, that I felt that New Japan was back. Now, Matt, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, that's all right. Uh, um, I think a lot of this had to do with the crowd. I, it's the first time I was watching, last, uh, watching the show to this morning when I watched it, and... I was like, wow, this crowd is back into this and making these matches even seem bigger. Yeah. They were in, in really, but, really chant chance, American style chance now and some Listen, of these dude, chance but shows. you got a great Go you got a great card. You had a great card here that uh, listen, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the stuff I haven't seen, and I'm looking forward to matches that I normally would have, you know, maybe skipped over if this was a different time. The show began with a great match. Will Ospreay defeating Lance Archer. 
for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, uh, heavyweight title number one contendership match. Uh, you know, this is, and this was to set up Kenny Omega and Will Ospreay too. I mean, how do you not want this match? Now, you know, the interesting thing is a lot of people were speculating that that would be one of the main matches at All In. And we're getting it at Forbidden Door. So that leaves something even bigger. Unless I can't see them doing it a third time, you know, for that show. But this leaves both those guys open to have some really interesting opponents, possibly. Who does Kenny face? Who does Will face? At All In. Not, not, not talking about Forbidden Door. Uh, Los Ingrenables de Japón defeated just five guys. Great name. Terrible name, but great name. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> great name and a terrible name all at the same time. Just five guys. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. Catch 22. Defeated the Intergalactic Jet Setters. Kevin Knight and Kushida. I like that you put the copyright uh, logo next to Kushida here. Is he is he is he trademarked? <laughs> I'm just I'm popping myself on my notes <laughs> at his ridiculous notes here. Nothing. I'm gonna tell you nothing is double spaced. Everything is just just one run on sentence. The whole card. No bullet points. Right? You don't do bullet points. No links. Who needs them? I, <laughs> who needs them? <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I look at this and I lose my mind. <laughs> Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Jeff Cobb's New Japan uh, and, and New Japan Strong Television Championship. I do like the um, the stuff they did last week with him and him on uh, on 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 Ring of Honor with Joe. You know that the two TV champions. Uh, very cool. I like it. I'm, I'm into it. Uh, IWGP Tag Team Championship. Bishaman. I hope I'm saying that right. Defeated the United Empire and House of Torture. Great name, by the way. Takahashi and uh, Evil. Never open weight championship. Dave Finley defeated El Fantasmo. IWGP Junior Championship. Takahashi defeated Master Wado. Hiromo is fantastic. I I'm really interested in him. Uh, I, I, you know, that, that, that it was really unfortunate, the neck injury he had, uh, that, that really put a, a slowdown to him, but the guy is great, man. Really, really cool. He, he's really become like, if you think about it, as far as juniors, um, over there, he's up there on that list of all time greats now. Oh yeah. Really for, as, as a junior. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. He's so impressive here. I, 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 very impressive. Very, very impressive. Now let me ask you this, Matt, and you give you give me your point of view here. Uh, do you think he goes to a heavyweight? Uh, I don't know if he fits, to be honest. But I, he can. He maybe he does. Maybe you know. Um, it's an interesting thought, but he's so great at the juniors. So, you know, mm. I I had to what I had to stall right there. Okay, I'm going to explain to you what's happening here. My 105-pound, nine-month-old Bernese Mountain Dog has discovered how to open the door with his hand. I mean, he's literally opening the, the, the office door I, because, I, I, like a dummy, I didn't lock it. And he keeps coming in here just looking at me. He's like, what, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Get up and play with me. So he opened the door again. So that's, that's what it was. I felt like I was, I was Lance showed up with his dog in the background. Uh, so we got a uh, ton of... Takahashi and Master Wado never open weight six man championship chaos. This was interesting. Chaos. Okada Ish and Ishi and uh, Tanahashi defeated the Blackpool Combat Club. What did you think of this match? This was a lot of fun. I mean, from from the beginning to the end, I really, really enjoyed everything they did here. There was a lot of story being told between um, uh, Shooter, uh, Umino, and uh, Okada. Like, oh, Okada doesn't think he's good enough. And, and turn Basically, they were the uh, chaos pretty much played the heels in this match for a lot of it. Yeah. And 
and this is the match where I really noticed the crowd. Like the crowd was so well, into this. Well, think about it. They don't Everything. get to see Moxley. Mm-hmm. They don't get to see Claudio. They don't get. To, yeah. You know, it's not. It's not something they really get to see. And all. Look, think about the talent in this match. And supposedly Claudio's flight got delayed, and he literally made it to the arena right. Wow, before the I didn't match, know that. According to that, according to what Kevin Kelly said on a commentary. I, yeah. So. so after this match, we got a. Um, we got a promo, a prepackage from Danielson challenging Okada at Forbidden Door. You know, if there was ever a time to do this match, this would be the time. You know, we, we, we talk about how you don't know what tomorrow brings you. And if you have an opportunity to do something tremendous, you, you should not really hold out. Especially guys like Danielson that, you know, he's, he's coming to the end of his career. He's not, he's not in the beginning of his career that you're going to have many opportunities to do this. I, I think this is one of those moments that you got to take it. And man, I think those two guys have a lot to, you know, they're going to, they're going to want to prove to each other how good they are. I mean, we know it, but these guys are going to put on a clinic. Very excited for this. I'm curious who Tanahashi faces. Do you do Tanahashi Moxley? I don't want to see that again. Do you do Claudio and him? Claudio and Tanahashi? I'm into that too. Or do you do Punk? Do you just go with it? Very you interesting. Could. You could go that route, for sure. IWGP World Championship. Sonata defeated Suji. Yoda Suji. I love his look. Suji's really building himself out to be, uh, you know, one of this top. You know, they have a good couple guys here. Sonata, younger guys. Sonata, Suji, uh, 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 Umino. You know, these are all guys that that are really, you know, that next generation of talent in this company. And they're going to be having these unbelievable matches for the next, you know, who knows how many years. And Sonata's looking great as champion. A lot of people were very curious how he'll look and how he'll do. I think this is a, this is a good move for them. And Suji was a good, great and, opponent. And the crossover now with him coming to the stage more, I think will yeah. help out a lot. Too. Yeah, that crossover's mm-hmm. helping. I think there's, you know, now that the pandemic's over, they're able to kind of come here and be on American TV. But I want to see Suji in a match. I want to see Sonata. Who does Sonata face? Sonata and MJF. That's the match, guys. That's the match. Not saying, not reporting it. That's what I want to see. Weird match. Wrestling Observer Live coming back with the final segment right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here on Sports Byline. The final segment here of the show. Hey, coming up this week. Tomorrow on Raw, Seth Rollins versus Damian Priest has been announced. World Heavyweight title match like that. I'm into that. I, you know, put that title on the line on TV. I'm into it. Women's Money in the Bank qualifier, Becky Lynch versus Sonya Deville. Also, Women's Money in the Bank qualifying match between Zoe Stark and Natalia. On AEW Dynamite, AEW International Championship, Orange Cassidy defends against Swerve Strickland. They got to push this guy. Now with two shows, I think you'll get more time with uh, Swerve. Very impressive. Jay White versus Ricky Starks. Juice Robinson and FTR are banned from ringside. Opportunity to start having uh, Jay White be a prominent guy on this TV show, which they really should. And also, you're getting the match announcement for next uh, for the first Collision show. You're almost a week away from Collision, so you're going to be building that up. You're gonna you're gonna find out. Also, who's on that roster? We I mean, we know some of the names. Miro, Andrade, but who's on that first show? I don't know. You're going to have to do something. Also, the title. Is MJF on everything? We're, we're going to have to find that out also. A lot of uncertainty here, but that's the beauty of professional wrestling. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. I also do two other shows. Matt Men Podcast on Fridays. Along with, we're live, pal, with Garrett Gonzalez on Tuesdays. Just follow me. You'll find out when I'm doing it. Uh, And that's it for this week, guys. Uh, Listen, enjoy wrestling. It's going to be a great week. We'll see you all next time. Take care.